Hello. Thank you for hanging around for the second video on the series demand forecasting. I call this as video one, primarily because it talks about the step one in demand forecasting. So these are the five steps that we talked about in the previous video. Uh, we and in this video we're going to talk about what to forecast. And as we know, this idea of what to forecast is talks about two things. Number one is uh, the span of forecast, how long into the future do we forecast, and uh, the scope of forecast is it what exactly are we forecasting? Is it individual products or groups of products? So let's jump into this uh, uh, topic. Here uh, we need to understand two key principles. Number one is that group or aggregate forecasts are always more accurate than individual forecasts. So for example, let's assume we are in a football match or a soccer match as you'd call it. So here it's very difficult to predict how many goals would each and every player make in one particular game. But if we know the two teams playing, it's easier here to predict the total goals that a team would score. When we look at this principle from a corporate or a business viewpoint, um, we can say that, uh, let's assume I run an apparel store. It's more difficult to predict the sale of each and every apparel, but it's relatively easier to predict the number of store people that walk into my store on any given day. So that's the principle number one. Principle number two says that short term is always more accurate than long term, right? So let's say I ask each of you a question of what you are doing tomorrow or in the next hour. All of you will be always more accurate in predicting that rather than when if I ask you the second question, uh, which is what are you doing one year later, right? Uh, and even in stock market, so that's the visual that we have here. It's relatively easier to predict the price of a stock um, tomorrow or uh, a day la a week later and much more difficult to pre uh, predict the price of the stock maybe a year or five years later. So we combine these two uh, principles in this slide or in, in this graphic here, where we say that uh, the group and uh, short term forecasting is always more accurate than the long term and individual forecasts. So as much as possible, if you're going long term, we must be group. So let me give you two examples here um, to clarify this particular visual. Let's assume um, somebody wants to start a new hospital in a particular city. Uh, one way to decide on the capacity of the various wards that they can they should have in their hospital is to probably um, look at every individual, maybe do a sampling plan, and then just look at the kind of diseases that each of those individuals in the sample have, and group that, add it all up, and use that to decide the capacity or the wards. Uh, yeah, this is individual. and. Um, things may change and this is likely to be highly inaccurate. Uh, one way to improve accuracy for this hospital could be maybe they look at the demographics of the society, the age distribution, the gender distribution, and uh, then use this demographics to predict the kind of overall illnesses that are associated with those demographics and use that data to predict the kind of num wards and the capacity of the wards that they should have in that hospital. So what we're saying here is that the direct grouped forecast is likely to be more accurate rather than a forecast of individuals which is added up. Let me give you a second example here. So we have this famous example on supply chain postponement of paints, right? So, so one thing we could do is, uh, so here uh, most um, hardware stores do not maintain inventory of each and every paints, but they have an inventory of white base or a white primer and multiple dyes. The primer and the dyes are combined uh, after the customer expresses a preference for a particular type of paint. So one way here could be that uh, a shop looks at each and every orders in the last day, year and then use that, you know, each and every order of each and every individual shade that the customer has ordered to somehow create a forecasting model. Well, an easier way is to probably just look at the consumption of white primer and um, the dyes over the past some period and then use that to forecast. Um, that's always a much easier and a much more accurate way of uh, forecasting. So uh, 
what we're saying here to improve forecast we should avoid that long term and individual quadrant that you see up there and as far as possible we should see stay in this group and the short term forecasting that you see here and by doing that, we will automatically improve the accuracy of our forecast. Thank you for staying with me for the second video and um, see you in the third video after.